Well, this is going to be brief, and um, it's entitled, Listen to Advice. And of course, that would be dependent upon the nature of the advice and what standard it would be based on. But after the queen <laughs> fell out of favor with King Ahasuerus, a plan was enacted to find the replacement. Now, that would be the Queen Vashti. And this is from Esther 2, 22, 8, to chapter 2, verse 8. Now, there were many young ladies who were taken in order to see who might be chosen. And you'll remember that Esther 2, 8 brings out that Esther was one among them. After Esther's father and mother had died, she was taken by her uncle Mordecai, Esther 2, 7. She was, it said, described as beautiful in face and beautiful in form, verse 7. And she found favor with the king's servant who was in charge of all these young women, Esther 2 and verse 9. When the time came for the young women to take turns to meet the king, they were each permitted to take anything they desired to the king's palace. Chapter 2, verse 13. And this had the potential to help her stand out from all the rest of the young women and to distinguish her before the king. However, when Esther's turn came, she didn't request anything except what he guy, the king's eunuch, who's in charge of the women, advised. Chapter 2, verse 15. Well, remember, she's a very young woman, and despite her youth, she was wise enough to realize that he guy's sight was valuable. So rather than assuming she knew what was best for her, as the other young women evidently did, she listened to wiser counsel and she followed what was suggested. And the result was simply that the king loved Esther more than all the women. And the scripture teaches us that she found favor and kindness with him more than all the other virgins. Thus, because of all that, he set the royal crown on her head and made her queen, Esther 2, in verse 17. She listened to advice from the right source concerning the right situation. Others have knowledge and experience that can benefit us. And rather than arrogantly thinking we know what's best for us in every situation, then we should take advantage of the help that others have to offer. Always, of course, letting the Bible be the measuring rod as to the wisdom or the lack of it in the advice that is offered us. Of course, what that does is put us right back to the position of we have to study the Bible. You cannot know it unless you study it. It also focuses in on the fellowship, an aspect of fellowship, that should characterize all faithful brethren. And that is that since we're of one mind, one judgment, on living the life that God demands we live, if heaven is to be our home, that we will appreciate advice from people who are striving to do the same thing we are. Now, of course, we're talking about the area of what is the best option to get a thing done. And, of course, if we choose the right option, we're choosing the one that is most advantageous to us, and that's exactly what Esther did. 
So many times when we speak of wisdom and when we speak of advice and taking it or not taking it, then it's in the area where we have options. I think a great many people fail to understand that. The obligations that we're to believe, that we're to obey, that pertain to forgiveness of sin and living faithful Christian lives in the Lord's church, always have options involved. In fact, you can't discuss which option we'll use in discharging this obligation until there's an obligation. And there's no obligation where God has not spoken. Thus, when the authoritative word puts upon us an obligation, then we ask the question, well, what is the quickest way possible I can carry out this? And we may want to counsel one another. Find out. Figure out if this situation, what's the best way to do this? So just knowing the obligation is a big step, and it's the first step. But knowing how best sometimes carried out may involve listening to others and counseling with others. And this little example from Esther herself as a young woman gives us some insight into the wisdom she possessed even as a young woman and in this critical situation she found herself. So I hope this one little point will make a difference with us as we think things through. And once we've concluded what God obligates us to do, we will pose the question, well, what's the best way to get it done in the quickest, most best way possible? That is the most advantageous way. So I hope these things help. We'll let that go for tonight. And we'll go into the lesson here in just a moment.